It's a tough battle, and we're losing, <laughs> just in case you didn't know. <laughs> but you know, the notion that you only fight if you think you'll win is absurd. Forgive me if you've heard me say this, but it changed my life visiting Normandy Beach. Think every one of those guys at 20 years old thought he was going to win? They weren't stupid. The Spielberg film had it historically accurate. They were peeing in their pants. Optimists don't pee in their pants, right? People who are afraid that it's not going to go well do. So you don't fight just because you think you'll win. You fight because you have to win. You fight because it's the right thing to do, because people fought for us before we showed up. We're losing the greatest experiment in, in human freedom, in human goodness, in the history of the world. There's nothing like this experiment, nothing. And very bad people call it a bad country. There is something sick to calling America bad. There's something sick. To call America racist, they don't know what they're talking about. It's the least racist project in human history where multi-ethnic and multi-racial groups lived. <coughs> There's nothing like this, nothing. When I grew up, I, it, it, the distortions are so profound. I grew up a liberal, what else could I be? You know, on my birth certificate, it has, it has uh, sex, male, affiliation, Democrat. <laughs> so I'm a Jew from Brooklyn. So it was just, it's in your DNA, it's in your birth certificate. So I grew up a liberal. But it was very different from the left that dominates today. It was a liberal idea that you should be race blind. It was a Nazi idea that race matters. Do you understand? It was, only the Nazis believed that. Today, the left and the Nazis are the only two groups who believe race matters. Isn't that astonishing? I mean, think about that. And Jews, my fellow Jews, go along with the idea that race matters. The victims of racial thinking subscribe to the notion that race matters. That's how sick it is. What the hell did, what did my fellow Jews learn from the gas chambers? Nothing, nothing. You would think the first thing they would learn is that anyone who thinks race is important is an enemy, is a mortal enemy. And they didn't. They're their best pals. You think, any, you think one of the lessons of the Holocaust would have been that those who hate the Jews are an enemy of humanity, that they start with Jews and then they go to non-Jews, so that if the non-Jew had knew, known that, they would have fought Hitler early and then not dismissed him as a Jewish problem, killed him, killed the Nazi movement, and they would have saved, would have saved 50 million non-Jews lives, not to mention the 6 million Jews. You would think that, right? And the Jews are for the Iran deal, country that is de dedicated to doing Hitler's work. It's sick. I, I, I have no better word. It's not just evil, it's sick. We live in a sick time, and I have theories as to why this sickness is. I think it's, it's, it's a soullessness that ultimately emanates from boredom, the boredom that is created by the death of God and religion, and uh, the combination of affluence, freedom, and secularism is devastating. And that's what I believe has happened. People fill their lives with meaning. Viktor Frankl was right, after, after food, the biggest human urge is not sex, even among males. The biggest human urge is meaning. There are people who live without sex and have a happy life. There is no one who lives without meaning and has a happy life. What we have is a dearth of meaning and people are finding meaning in sick ways. Meaning can be filled with bad just as much as with good. You see it in the Middle East and you see it here. In different, in different expressions. So we had this idea that we could change minds in five minutes. Turns out we were right. You can change minds in five minutes. Because it's not their mind, 
that was ever committed to the other way of thinking. People on the left don't think left, they feel left. They feel for the poor, they feel for the black, they feel for the woman, they feel for the Hispanic, they feel for the destitute, they feel for the Palestinian. They don't think it through. It's none of it is thought through. It's, it's a giant balloon punctured with five minutes of reason and fact, and it's over. We have viewers on, on the Middle East video in Saudi Arabia. Isn't that something? We know, they actually know, uh, YouTube and, uh, and, and uh, Facebook know where these things are seen. We get, we get the reports. So let me be a little uh, personal for a moment. Uh, uh, periodically, like every day, <laughs> uh, somebody will ask me if I'm gonna run for president. And uh, by the way, it's not like I haven't given it thought and someone I'm very close to is uh, a supporter of the idea, my wife. <laughs> so uh, it's, uh, it's not like it doesn't, it doesn't play a role in my thinking, but I, I, I'm not, my nature is not in that direction. I have no desire for power, none. I never did. That's one of the things I, I, I don't like about the left. They're crazy about power. I'm, I, all I ever wanted we just found, I, I was hoping we didn't lose it, uh, and uh, we didn't, we found my diary from high school. In my junior year, I knew what I wanted to do with my life. It hasn't changed since my junior year in high school. I want to influence people to the good. That is what I wrote, and I have never wavered a minute. My, my son who was here, David Prager, who many of you know, and if you don't, you will, if you haven't gotten a call from him, you will get a call from him. I just want to assure you of that. David's here from Florida. And uh, he said to me, it's very interesting, when he was very young, uh, like in college, and he said that I was very lucky, and I had never realized that he was entirely right. He said, You're, you were very lucky, Dad. At such an early age, you knew what you wanted to do with your life. And I am lucky, I admit it. But I, I knew it then, and it hasn't changed one iota. That's all I want to do. All I want to do is influence people to the good. I have, I have felt since high school that I was sort of like a doctor who had a cure for cancer, and my biggest problem was not the cure. I had it. The problem was marketing it. How do I get it out to people? And finally, after all the books, and after all the articles, and after all the radio shows, and they're all important, but I don't knock that for a moment, they all made this possible. No radio, this never would have existed. But this is really the vehicle. Technology has offered us the opportunity to touch the world with goodness. This is a huge thing to sit up there with two wonderful young people from Brazil and Guatemala who have been touched by what we produce here in America. This is a big deal. You, I think you have a sense or you wouldn't be here tonight. You're part of a big deal. I didn't know it would be this big. I told you, if it was 500,000, I, I would have thought it was wonderful. 150 million and most of them, the biggest single group is under 35 years of age. That's, a, that's big, that's important stuff. Somebody has to change minds. We're changing minds. So this is, uh, this is what, what we're doing. I, I can't get over it. I, I really do hope I have my parents' genes and lived uh, well and healthy to my 90s, if not hundreds. I, I, my, my, I, I ache to live long for the reasons everyone does, <laughs> because we, if you're healthy, you prefer life to death. And, but I do also because there's so much to do. And this is so important. It's just, it's so, so important. It's easy to tear down. It is very hard to build. The, uh, the Taliban destroyed those Buddhist giant sculptures right in Afghanistan. You know how long it must have taken to build those sculptures? I'll bet it took generations. 
and they, they blew it up in, in, in two seconds. And that's what the left is. The left is, is, is a nonviolent Taliban. It is blowing up America and its history. When they took the cross off the uh, L.A. County seal, I, I, I organized a big demonstration. And I said to the Board of Supervisors before whom I spoke, I said, this has nothing to do with separation of church and state. I'm a Jew. You are robbing me of my history. Christians founded Los Angeles County. That's why it's called Los Angeles, <laughs> not Los Secularistos. <laughs> That's what I said to the, uh, to, the, to the, you're robbing me of my history. And I looked at Zev Yaroslavsky, with whom I worked on Soviet Jewry the 30 years earlier. I, and I said, this is, you're doing what the Soviets did. There's a famous Soviet dissident line. In the Soviet Union, the future is known. It's the past that's always changing. That's what the left does. The past is always changing. Catholics founded Los Angeles. You're robbing me of my history, me. And you know what? It was so beautiful. There were signs that day. Jews for the cross, Buddhists for the cross, atheists for the cross. I loved it. It was awesome. There were rabbis and yarmulkes for the cross. That's a first in 2,000 years. This is, this is, this is what we can do. And, but we have to fight. There is a big problem, and I, I acknowledge it. Generally speaking, good people don't tend to fight. You know why? Because they have meaning in their lives personally. They love life. They love, their, they love their spouse, their friends, their families, their work, their country, their church. <laughs> so they're not dying to fight. They, they get meaning from politics. We don't. There's a big difference. That's why it, it, they have so many advantages. They have advantages in voting. Vote for us, we will give you more and more. We say, vote for us, you will do more and more. It's a big difference. Vote for us, we will shrink government. Vote for us, we will expand government. Which is, which is better sounding? I know which is more American, but which is better sounding? And that's what those two wonderful uh, people from South America were talking about. But we can win. This is, I, and I don't say these things easily. I am, I, I am very realistic. I fight whether I'm a pessimist or optimist, but I do now believe we can win. So this is why we're here. And, uh, you know, to know that uh, Steve and Janet, two such extraordinary people, gave us their home. Would you give them another hand? Because this is just... Uh, it's an unbelievable evening. One of, you, one of you came over to me earlier and said, so are you going to do this every year? So that's a hint, just a hint, you know. You know, eventually, my hope is we will, and we'll need Staples Center. But uh, in the meantime, this is a very good second choice to Staples Center, I must say. This is really, this has been, a, been a, 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 just a beautiful thing. I will, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll end with a, um, just a funny little story, because I see my son is here, whom I uh, truly adore. He's, he's very special. And, uh, you know, I, I, I've always said the um, uh, children are humbling. The moment you have a child, you, you are an instant humble, permanent humble, not just instant. It's just permanently humbling. It's, it's one of the the benefits of having a child. It just keeps you grounded. So let me give you, I, I just thought of this tonight. He'll, I'm sure he will remember this. So uh, I used to go on Bill Maher's show regularly. I think I was his most frequent guest until he went to Friday night, but I don't broadcast Friday nights because of the Sabbath, so it, which is better anyway. I, I, my pulse would go up on that show. <laughs> and uh, a, anyway, so what I was on all the time, or regularly, let's put it that way, not all the time, uh, so one day, I, I never like to bring my public life into the house because just, I'm just dad, which was clear anyway, as you will see. So I said to David, I don't know how, David, do you remember how old you were that night? About rough, roughly? 
Where are you, David? How you remember when there was a famous rapper? Okay, fine. Oh, good. Oh, no, if you don't remember, it's even better. I, th I think he, he was about 10. I'd say he was 10 or 11. So I said, David, you want to come? I'm going on the, 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 this uh, politically incorrect show. Nah, thanks, Dad. No thanks. Okay. I come back and uh, I said, Dave, maybe, I don't know if you'd enjoyed it. There was this guy on. I was on with this guy named Coolio. <laughs> you were on with Coolio? Why didn't you tell me? Of course I would have gone. So it's like his father is chopped liver. And Coolio is this legendary rap singer. And of course he'd have gone for Coolio. My father is their big deal, but Coolio. So this is, this is a great example of why it's important to be a parent. So uh, this stuff, uh, for so many reasons, does not go to my head. Uh, and I, I want to tell you the biggest reason. I, 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 I'm not in it for me. Uh, as corny as this sounds, I'm in it because I love this country. And um, I'm in it because I actually think God wants me to fight for the good stuff. That's it. I, 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 um, I don't have any other agenda. And I, I, you know what? I'm starting to believe that you believe that. <laughs> that's good. That's heartening to me because that's really the truth. And so I... I I'm really working for good stuff, and I'm a fighter. That I, that I, that's, that's, as I said, the good don't tend to fight, but I am a fighter. I really want to defeat the bad guys. To take down this country, to de-Americanize America, is such a bad act. It's, it's, it's equally in bad and stupid. What will supplant it? What has been better than this extraordinary experiment? 